Now we find out this man, Ezra, he went to God in genuine repentance. Now, verse 7, "...and they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity, that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem, and that whosoever would not come within three days according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. Now, they're making a real line of separation. Now, they're under law. I don't think that in the church today you could force this at all. But you see what they're doing. They're getting out all of the chaff that they possibly can from the good wheat here. And it would take about three days to come from any section in that land. And this is directed to these that have come out of Babylonian captivity because they've come to rebuild the city of Jerusalem and the temple. They are to come together. And they're to come together for a great time of spiritual refreshing, but repentance must precede it. And they're to come together, and if there are those that won't come, that hold something in their heart, they say they're not doing it my way, or they have some other objection, then they're to be put outside. Now, the church needs house cleaning today. And I don't mean taking out the dead wood of the members that can't locate. What the average church needs to get rid of are some of the members they can locate. They're the ones that they need to deal with. And if today real revival had come into the church, all this bitterness that you find even in our fundamental churches. Now, don't tell me they're not there. I was quite interested in several letters I received of uh, what I said some time ago about the condition of fundamentalism. There are a great many people thought I should have kept quiet about it. They said, you shouldn't have brought that out in the open. I believe when you got cancer, telling people about it, friends, and when it's a spiritual cancer, knowing that the very life of the church, I think somebody ought to call attention to it and bring the old skeleton out of the closet. Let's get rid of it. That's the important thing. And I make no apology for doing that at all. Then there were several folk thought that their church was all right. The interesting thing, I happen to know a couple of the churches that were mentioned to me, and I know the pastor. The pastor has a different viewpoint than you have. I can assure you that. You see, bitterness today is like quinine in a barrel of water. It doesn't take much of it. And I remember that when I was a boy... My mother would always tell me when I'd cut up a chicken, you don't break the gallbladder. You ruin the whole chicken if you do. You could have spoiled the entire fowl. And God wants to get rid of that. He says, for instance, Hebrews 12, 15, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And the Lord said, a little leaven leaveneth a whole lump. Just a few complainers and critics in the church can absolutely stifle any spiritual movement in the church. How many lives have been wrecked by bitterness? And we don't have time to develop that. 